guys, my name is Meg and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my 32 week pregnancy update. So this week the baby is the size of a Chinese cabbage, which I don't really, I've never had a Chinese cabbage so I don't really know what size that is, but that's what my pregnancy app tells me. I now weigh 188 pounds, so I've gained 48 pounds since the beginning of my pregnancy. My midwife says that is seeming just perfect and that I'm looking really healthy and gaining a proper amount of weight for, especially for my height and everything, so I'm really happy with that. One thing that I, this has actually been happening for a few weeks now, but I just keep forgetting to tell you guys in my pregnancy updates for some reason, is that I have been leaking colostrum every now and then, especially at night, or it's, it's mostly at night. One of my breasts is squished or something, I wake up and there's like a puddle of colostrum. So I know that I'm producing colostrum. I know that you produce colostrum even if you aren't leaking it, it's gonna be there. And some women leak and some don't. I leaked colostrum with my daughter's pregnancy as well, so I was just kind of expecting it to happen and it is starting to happen. I just recently had another midwife appointment. I had missed the one before that because she lives an hour away and up where she is was really bad icy roads and so I decided not to go. So I had to reschedule for after all the holidays and everything. So I had to wait quite a while, which is fine. I generally don't go to every single appointment anyway. I skip a few just because I can tell that he's fine and I just trust my body and trust my instincts to know if something does go wrong. And my midwife is just super chill about it and she trusts me as well and so she's fine with letting me skip appointments. But he looked really good in this last appointment. He's growing properly, he's measuring the correct amount of centimeters when she measured my belly. His heartbeat sounds amazing. He was moving a ton and she could tell that he was positioned with his head down and his butt over kind of to my left side and his feet were over on my right side, which is funny because that's like the position Sophia was in all the time, like during my entire third trimester, she was in this same exact position because she didn't like to move around very much. So I'm really curious to see if he's just kind of like her and just generally likes to be in the same position or if he will move around a lot more. Now that I can kind of, now that he's big enough, I can more tell what position he's in. I'm not as good as the midwife at it. I don't have that much experience, but once they get bigger like this, it's easier to tell for me. She gave me my list of birth supplies to gather up for our home birth and I just need to have it gathered by like 36-ish weeks. So there's some stuff I need to order online, just some like gauze pads and waterproof pads and different things like that. So I'm actually planning a video. After I get all my supplies, I'll show you guys the home birth supplies that I have gathered up, just in case you're curious. So I'm excited to have that list because I am such a planner. I love to have things ready way before they need to be ready. But Lately, it's been extremely hard to put my socks and shoes on. Like, if Luke's at home and I have to put my socks on by myself, I cannot breathe while I do it, and it's it's such a workout, it's ridiculous. So, thankfully, Luke is super sweet, and he always helps me put my socks and shoes on when he is home and I need to do it. <laughs> One thing that has been happening lately is that my ribs go numb if I sit for too long. And it doesn't seem to happen on our couches. I guess it's just the right angle that they don't go numb but in our church chairs especially like sitting through the church service my ribs are so numb by the end like these ribs right here above where my belly starts to protrude they're completely numb if I I, I don't know what it is about those chairs but that's been happening lately if you guys watched my last pregnancy update you'll know that I had some really crazy stiff neck issues and thankfully that is all fixed now I can Hit my head to the side again. It's so nice to have a full range of motion in my neck again. <laughs> but that was kind of scary because my arm would like go numb if I tried to tip my head that direction. It was like freaky. But that's all fixed and I actually went to the chiropractor again when I was up by my midwife since they're, they're in the same city. So I went to the chiropractor again while I was there which was really good because I had some other issues going on that I didn't even know about yet. And I got my daughter adjusted as well, so that was really good. But yeah, there was something weird out in my pelvis or something. And while she was adjusting me, one of my butt cheeks <laughs> started to cramp up. It was the most ridiculous thing ever and so embarrassing. 
and it was like such a bad cramp and I couldn't like stretch it to get rid of it and then that cramp got so bad that the other side cramped up. It was just this whole ridiculous embarrassing thing and yeah, it took a while for them to go away. But I was really, really stiff during the adjustment. Like I didn't even realize how stiff I was so I'm really glad that I went and got adjusted even though I didn't know how bad it was. So at this point I'll probably go to the chiropractor every time I go to a midwife appointment just because I know how important chiropractic care is and making sure your body's all aligned and especially with how stiff I am, like I'm just kind of more of a naturally stiff person. I want to make sure everything is in line for as I get closer to going into labor so that I know the baby is in the right position and is able to drop down and engage and signal that I need to go into labor. My varicose veins are still super uncomfortable and painful, and especially if I work really hard during the day, by the evening they're just really, really like feeling like they're gonna explode, and so that's been no fun. I'm sort of getting used to it, like it definitely doesn't bother me as much as before I knew what it was. Like now that I know that they're varicose veins, I can kind of ignore them a little bit more, now that I know it's not like serious. But it is still really annoying and I'm looking forward to when he's born and hopefully they'll go away. At least that's what I've heard is that when you're not pregnant those will just go away. So that will be really nice when they're gone. I've actually started to get a few more Rex and Hicks contractions which I was waiting for this to happen because I started getting them at like 20 weeks with my daughter and I would get one like every day like they were like all the time. And I haven't had hardly any with this pregnancy but lately I've been starting to get a few more. Not as many as with her still, but, and they're not uncomfortable at all, it's just my stomach tightens, and I don't know, I guess it's just like a familiar feeling, like it's not comfortable, it's not uncomfortable, it's just kind of nice because it reminds me of my daughter's pregnancy, so it's kind of interesting. So let's show you guys the bump now. actually feel him right now. He's got his butt like right here. <laughs> I feel something that feels like a little bottom. Yeah, and it feels like his back kind of comes around here. It's fun to try to feel where he is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this 32 week pregnancy update. I'm getting so insanely close and we're getting so excited. I have a few more pregnancy related videos planned for you guys besides just the regular pregnancy updates that I'm super excited about. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye!